What? Is your mic on? I think so. Is, is my mic? Is my mic on? Hold on, let me get away from you. Hello? Hello, is my mic on? Your, your mic is on. Hello? Hello, <laughs> is my mic on? Hello? <laughs> Alright, so we just got the call this morning from the rigging company that... Well, it should back up. Yeah. That's... So, we got another CNC machine. Because it's been so slammed here lately, we can't keep up with this with the little mini mill. That it was time for a, a new CNC machine, which we knew was going to come eventually anyway. It's one of the reasons why we moved into the space. So, we just got a call from the rigging company, who said to me, "We have the CNC and we're ready to deliver it. Your options are either today after lunch, or after Memorial Day." And it seemed to really be only one. We one were like. Today. Cinco de Mayo. Which it is, Cinco de Mayo. <gasps> so, Nathan here is... Come over. Get jiggy with it. <laughs> Listening to Mexican clubbing party, I guess. The same uh, Mexican music. clubbing party song over and over again. So, we just kind of got the shop cleaned out here. We had a bunch of stuff here we cleaned out. So we're actually going to have them pick up the mini mill. Probably going to have to back it out of here. Bring in the new uh, VF2 SS and put it where that's at. The mini mill is then going to get turned around and placed here. So they should be face to face. We'll play around with some of the spacing once, once everything gets here. But kind of the next thing is we have to figure out, we gotta pump all the coolant out of this, otherwise it's gonna slosh everywhere. There's like 40 gallons of coolant under there. So Dusty, tell them our... Okay, so here's what we have. Here's the breakdown. The machine is already equipped with a pump. So the goal here is we're going to unscrew this hose, put it into the buckets, fill the buckets. Now the reason why we have the buckets elevated is for how we're going to extract all the coolant from it because we're going to take our pocket knives out we're just going to stab it and let it drain back into the machine when we're done it's like the old cartoon movies where yeah. they like, pop the cork in the barrel and just whoosh. so we can fill it and we can empty it and hopefully it goes according to plan and one of these things just doesn't go yes yeah, so i was just say dusty what, what do you think the options are that these buckets tip off of our little homemade cart here we have two buckets here, so it just doubled, whatever it was. <laughs> Should the added weight help keep it more stable? I don't know. I think, I vote we fill this one, like, to the brim, and then we ride around the parking lot with it. Yeah. Uh, fill them both halfway. Yeah, like then. maybe low. So, yeah, there's a bunch of coolant under there. If you can see, it's dark. We've got to get out. Listen, the number of times we've spilt <clears throat> coolant on this ground yeah, tell them about the last time. It has time. to be four times. And the last time was because Greg got distracted. So since I have the attention span of a goldfish, mm -hmm. um, I needed to top it off. So I bring the hose over, stick the hose in to the tank, and let it fill up. I watch, watch the gauge on the screen. Something happened. And One hour later. I don't know if it was that long. It was long enough to then come out later and see a pool of coolant all over the floor over here. Like we're talking back into the corner oh, over here. There's everywhere. All the way back over into here. Everywhere. Yeah. It's a downside of the hose method and also having somebody with the tension span of a goldfish do it. To be fair, we do wear a lot of hats around here. Yeah. And you can't be a full-time tank filler, unfortunately. No, Braden should do that. Braden, why don't you Braden, do that? Braden, this is you your do fault. The this is all your fault. Why didn't you watch the coolant? While it was filling. Oh, was it here? No. Oh, so his excuse is he didn't show oh, up to work. He wasn't here, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's, your, it's even more your fault. Where were you that day? Yeah. All right, well, let's see. Let's see how this goes draining the, draining the coolant. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Ready? Let her go, Captain. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Come out of the <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
Now we know. <laughs> okay. Are you ready this time? Let's try it again. Didn't know we had a fire hose over here. Oh. That's some power, dude. So here's the thing. We've only got about 30% of the coolant left in the tank. The problem is this pump here, which you probably can't see just yet. Slide it back a bit here. Can you see the pump right down there? This pump. The way it sits, sits on a trough to make waves pushing more coolant in. Pump. I'm gonna put that bad boy in here and hopefully that helps us clean out the rest of the oh I'm out of focus. Hopefully that helps us clean out the rest of the coolant that's in the pump. Wasn't very concise, but it's got you up to speed since we're kind of in a hurry because we're coming afternoon. So the truck is finally here. They get there and uh, this is this is such an exciting time because uh, just it's sitting there on the truck and it's all wrapped up. Here the guys are getting the getting the tarp off of. This just came from California at a showroom to Cleveland, Ohio. And then uh, this rigging company then brings it down to us. Here they are lifting it off. This is always kind of nerve wracking because there's a big piece of machinery sitting up there. And uh, it seems like such a little uh, fork to be picking that thing up. Because that thing weighs, I was like 8,000 8, pounds. Here you see front pocket innovations as ours backing it up and then uh they sit it down thankfully it was a decent day in ohio wasn't raining so we we're able to sit the thing down out in the on the parking lot and start getting it unwrapped there's looks like a like a space rover we get all that foil stuff off and then we're able to finally start looking inside of it they ship it with this blue goo all over the place inside of it to keep it from rusting. It's super thick grease. You see all the boxes in there full of parts. Uh, the guys here are getting getting it ready to move. There's some giant bolts holding it down to the pallet. And uh... getting the door open here, getting ready to bring it in. Actually, first thing we got to do is get the the mini mill out. We're going to put the CNC, the new CNC, where the mini mill is at. So having the guys pick it up. They're gonna put it out back out in the parking lot. So there's room now to bring the new VF2 SS in. There's a little bit of a, of a rise here. It's probably almost a good foot and it happens pretty quick. So it's kind of nerve wracking watching these guys bring the CNC up this hill pretty carefully. But still, again, it's an 8,000 pound CNC going up a Rise there, pop it into the into there, and uh, got a guy there kind of settling it down. And there we go, we're in. And now comes all the part of trying to get the thing placed where we need to get it placed. You really have about one shot to get this right, because it's not cheap to have them come out and set this stuff. So we take our time, make sure everything is exactly where we want it to be. Make sure it's square to something, whether it's the wall or or just looks square. 80. But you got to spend a lot of time around these things. You want to make sure they're everything. It's gonna go. Here they are bringing the mini mill back in the shop. Again, it's a little sketchy coming up over that the hill. And uh, we take our time, make sure everything's square in place. Make sure we got enough room between the machines that we can work. So after much consideration, right on. debate, we decided that we're just gonna leave it exactly where we put it the first time. Okay. And nothing else is gonna change. Good All right. Is it nice? Yeah. Straight and everything. Yep. Perfect. I got a machine in the way of my view though. <laughs> it's your own fault. <sighs> oh. 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 
Is that how it's gonna go? <laughs> All right, end of the day update here. We got both machines in their places. The VF2 has power and air hooked up. That's kind of what Haas wants you to have done and hooked up for when they come. They send a tech out that comes through, gets everything assembled, put together, leveled, uh, so you're ready to rock. The mini mill, uh, I just need to get the air airline uh, run. I actually have somebody that's gonna come out, he's gonna bring a custom cut length and get that all set up. There's still, look at all those boxes. There's a lot of boxes, so a lot of parts that, I was trying to look through and see if I could figure out where stuff went. There's a couple of things I kind of figured out, but uh, I don't know, I might mess, might mess with it a little bit more tomorrow. Time to go home, get some dinner, relax, and get back at it tomorrow. All right, so it is the next morning. Came in, got all this set up. It has power and air now. So I think we're ready to flip the breaker and power up. So let's do this. All right, nothing sparked. All right, here we go. Beeping. Ruby's coming to check it out. What do you think, buddy? Oh, we got lights. Oh, man. All right, machine needs activation. I got to call Haas. They give you a, uh, a number to punch into it to get it activated, but we at least got lights. That'll only take a minute to do. So the Haas tech is here. I tried to stay out of his way, so I didn't really get a whole lot of video with him getting in there. He brings a ton of stuff to make sure that everything is leveled, make sure that, that the probes are uh, are set, that's what he's doing here, making sure that, that the run out is set up, uh, so everything's, everything's ready to go. Uh, I mean, he spends at least a couple hours. All right, we got the machines in. We are ready to roll. It is installed, we go, in place. Let's go show them. I'll get the door. Thank you, sir. All right. So here you go. Ta -da! This is the new VF2 SS up and rolling, ready to make chips. We've I've done a I've done a little bit of cutting on it. I had to order a new sub plate for it for uh, for the vices and that sort of thing. So it's working, but it's not completely set and run for our uh, neomag plates yet. But this is it. We got both machines up and running. Kind of got my work workplace figured out. Uh, it's a little bit more compact than what it was, but super excited for this. Even check out, we still have a little bit of room back here. So our, I was worried about the whole shot being taken up by CNC's and being gr outgrown already, but plenty of space. he's got enough room to spin and twirl and this is my dance floor. do whatever Dusty does. Yeah, that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Check back our next video. We'll get some video of, uh, of things getting cut, things getting made, and all this in action. Guys, thank you so much. Have an awesome one.